Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this math video is we're going to explore the concept of scale factor. And we're going to see how scale factor can be expressed as a fraction, a decimal, and as a percentage. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so right here we have a 2 by 2 square. And let's start by just taking this square and copying it. Now, if we were to compare these squares, we would say they are identical in every way. We would say that they are congruent to each other. They have the same length and width, which is two by two. They have the same angle measures. They have the same perimeter, same area. Everything is the same about these squares. Now, if you were asked what the scale factor is between two objects that are congruent to each other, we would say that the scale factor is one. Now, a scale factor of one means that everything stayed exactly the same. So if the scale factor is greater than one, that means the shape is going to get larger. And if it is less than one, that means that you scaled down the shape and it became smaller. All right, so let's take this object now and let's increase its size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking this corner and dragging it upwards. Okay, now the length and the width of the square is three by three. It was two by two, but now it is three by three. Now, one thing that we should know about squares is that no matter how big or small they are, they will always be similar to each other. By the way, this is also true for circles as well. Now, we cannot say the same thing for different types of rectangles. Certain properties must be true for a pair of rectangles to be similar to each other. So we would say that this two by two square is similar to this three by three square, but by what factor did it increase? Well, what you have to do to check for scale factor is this. It really depends on are you scaling from the smaller to the larger or from the larger to the smaller. And to determine this, all you really have to do is take the new shape that you went to. So we started with the small one and went to the larger one. So start with the larger shape and just pick any side. So I'm just going to pick the height here, which is three. And you take that and you divide it by the length of the corresponding side of the shape you started with, which is this shape. And its height is two. So you take three and you divide it by two. And that would give you a factor of 1.5 or one and a half. Or as an improper fraction, you can say three halves or three over two. Some people like to leave their scale factor as an improper fraction. Now, what I want you to do is look on the screen and I want you to see that the shape is now 100% of its original size. Now, if we were to drag it to be three by three, we can see the shape is now 150% of its original size. And 150 would be the equivalent of 1.5, which is a scale factor. So sometimes you may be asked what the scale factor is as a percentage. So if we took three and we divided it by two, that would give us 1.5. And if we move that decimal two places to the right, that would be 150%. Now let's go ahead and stretch this square out a little larger. Now we can see that this square is 200% of what it was. So that just means we doubled all of the dimensions. We went from two by two to four by four. Now, if we stretch it out even more and create a five by five square, what we have now is a square that is 250% of what it once was. And 250% is the same thing as saying that each dimension became two and a half times larger. So the scale factor would be 2.5. And we could get that by taking this side length, which is five, and dividing it by this side length, which is two, and five divided by two is 2.5. And that's where we get the 250% from. Now, if we stretch this even further to a six by six square, now this is 300% larger than what it once was. So the scale factor is three. If we increase this to a seven by seven square, we are now at 350%, which is three and a half times larger. So the scale factor is 3.5. And if we go to an eight by eight square, this is 400% larger than it was. And we would say that the scale factor is four.
because it became four times larger, which is the same thing as 400%. Now, if you take a look on the screen and look at the percentages, you can see that as we are shrinking this square, the length and the width proportionately get smaller. For something to be similar to something else, the length and the width must increase or decrease by the same amount. So if you double the length, you have to double the width. That's very important when it comes to similarity. So let's say, for example, we started with this square, and all we did was double the height of the square. Well, we basically turned it into a rectangle, and we know that those are different shapes, so they are not going to be similar to each other. Notice that we made the height double of what it was, but the width stayed the same. So because we doubled the height, we have to go ahead and double the width. All right, so what we learned about scale factor is that we can express the scale factor as a decimal, a fraction, or as a percentage. We also learned that when scaling something up, our scale factor is going to be greater than one. But when scaling something down, our scale factor is going to be less than one. And if the objects are congruent to each other, the scale factor is going to be exactly one. We should also note that any set of similar figures are really just scale drawings of each other. And to be considered similar figures, all corresponding sides of the figures must increase or decrease by the same factor. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this map tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.